Hello there and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are going to be talking about firmware updates for the DJI Mavic 2 as well as a very long awaited update for the Inspire 2 series and that one I'll talk about shortly. Finally we're going to look at something DJI quietly slipped out this week and it's called the Phantom 4 RTK. Before I get started, I'd just like to say if you like what you see in this video, please take a few minutes and check out some of my other ones, as well as subscribing to the channel. When you do subscribe, you'll get a notification of any videos that we release in the future. Further to this, if you'd like to support the channel, there are some links in the description of this video and all our videos that allow you to purchase the products that you've seen, and it helps us to keep buying products to be able to talk to you guys about. So let's get on with it. Last week, DJI pushed out a small update for the new Mavic 2 series, and it is firmware version 1.00.0100. Now, this is a very minor update, which mostly contains bug fixes. It adds a couple of little features, like adding flight speed, for hyperlapse and a couple of other things they've optimized active track improved photo quality and panoramas and overall improved aircraft flight stability um, it's the kind of update you generally see after a new aircraft has been released the only real thing that's probably of interest in this update for most people is they've now enabled the side vision system to work in the quick shop sub modes like circle helix and boomerang so it does mean that you've got more functionality out of that side object avoidance system. There isn't really anything else in this update. We haven't seen the inclusion of the precision landing that was mentioned, but hopefully we'll see that in the near future. It's worth mentioning, if you do do this update, make sure you do check all of your settings because these updates normally have a habit of resetting them all and make sure you check your return to home height as well as any other flight critical settings just to make sure you don't get yourself into any trouble. Next, we're going to talk about something we've been waiting for for quite some time, and that is new Inspire 2 firmware. Now, it's not quite there yet. This is what is called a public beta. DJI have decided to put the next version of the firmware out to public test, and they have put this up on their website, and it's available for you to ask to join now. Now, they say that after 300 Inspire 2 users to test it, um, and they ask you to apply via the email address, and then if you're successful, you will have the option or the ability to potentially win DJI credit. Now we have been waiting for quite some time for this update and it does have a number of fixes. The interesting thing to note is that this is mostly bug fixes. There are no new features in this firmware. It is going to be version 1.02.0300 and it does appear to resolve a lot of the issues the guys on 0200 were having. That includes the issue where it it would automatically orientate the aircraft randomly, um, the random landing gear messages, as well as things around the gimbal pitch, the gimbal yawing by itself, or gimbal drifting, I should say, uh, an issue with your smoothness wasn't working in follow mode, and a few other things. Now, as I've said, it is a update and mostly bug fixes, and there's nothing specific in here to give you new features. It is a nice to see DJI finally get the update out for the Inspire 2 or at least into public beta because it has been quite some time. It's worth noting that this is an update for the entire aircraft, the remote controllers and Crystal Sky if you're using it as well. So it's not just an update for the aircraft itself, it is all of the components across the board. If you'd like to apply for it, you simply email beta at dji.com uh, with the Inspire 2 firmware public beta test feedback in the title and give them what they're asking for and you may be picked to test it. Now I'm not on this one myself, I haven't actually tested it, I have actually applied whether I'll get picked now or not I don't know, it's a bit late in the day, I've actually been away this week unfortunately. However it is good to see it finally out. I can say from some of the reports I've seen that everything is looking good so far. Um, please don't hold me to this, however the reports are here to say a lot of the drift problems are resolved, the aircraft is not randomly yawing and it does seem to tidy up a lot of the niggly issues that people were having on Vision 0200. Um, the, the Vision 0100 as well had a few quirks and it solved them too but overall it's very welcome to see it and hopefully this will actually get in everybody's hands very very shortly. 
Finally, I'm going to talk about a new aircraft called the Phantom 4 RTK. Now, this is something DJI quietly released this week. Now, this isn't a standard model. This is part of their Enterprise model. Now, it has actually been around for a little bit. We've seen pictures of it for a while, and it has been available in certain regions. However, DJI have now released it pretty much globally. Now, you can't buy it online. It is only available via your DJI Enterprise dealers. However, However, it, there are some things I want to talk about. Now, as it's called the Phantom 4 RTK, the aircraft itself is basically based on the Phantom 4 Pro version 2.0. It uses the same 20 megapixel sensor camera with the same global shutter options as the Phantom 4 Pro 2.0. It uses OcuSync just like the Phantom 4 Pro 2.0 and it has all of the same object avoidance sensors and everything around it as well. The big change to the aircraft itself is it now contains an RTK module which means it's going to give you that absolutely one centimeter precision horizontal accuracy and up to 1.5 centimeter precision vertical accuracy and again RTK in an aircraft like this is going to give you one specific use and that is mapping and DJI have really pushed that with this aircraft. As you can see, like most RTK systems, it has the typical yogurt pot on the top and it uses a new RTK module with the normal GPS module located below. Um, it's got a couple of other features as well called uh, time sync, which means it uh, synchronizes the data from the, the GPS and RTK with the app and takes the image data position from the center of the sensor as well. And it just means you're getting extra precision out of that camera. The real interesting part about this aircraft actually isn't the aircraft itself, but it's the remote controller. And whilst it may look very familiar to the Plus Series remote, it is actually very, very different. The first thing to note is that it has an external battery. It doesn't use the internal battery like we've seen before. It actually does the same as the Syndense remote controller and has the external battery as used on the Syndense and the Crystal Sky. It does have the typical screen that you've seen built in on the Plus. However, it has all new software. It uses something called GSRTK app or GSR, and it is an entirely new application specifically designed for mapping, and it allows you to get the best possible performance out of the AC. Now, there are question marks. Can you use third party applications? Can you use something like Pix4D on it? Uh, to be honest, we do not know at this stage. However, from what I have seen, this app will have pretty much everything you will ever need on board. So you probably wouldn't need to use something like Pix4D or Drone Deploy anyway. Something very interesting about this remote because of the OcuSync is something called multi-aircraft. Now, DJI say you can control up to five aircraft from this single remote controller at the same time, and it means that you can have multi-aircraft mapping live simultaneously. Now, this is entirely new. We've never seen this on a remote controller on DJI before. There has been something like this in GS Pro via the PC application. However, we've never seen it on the remote controller. So it is something that is going to be very interesting to see how it performs. The last thing I wanted to mention about this remote controller is that it does have a little bit of a hidden compartment at the bottom that allows you to plug in a USB cellular modem. And the reason for this is for the RTK system, because whilst there is a RTK mobile base station available that DJI will sell as part of a package, it also has the ability to use N-Trip, which means you can use third party fixed base stations for getting your RTK data. Now, this is done over the internet and you either use a 3G dongle or 4G dongle in the base of the remote, as I mentioned, or you can tether your smartphone to the device via Wi-Fi and do it that way. So if you didn't want to use the mobile base station, you can actually use the N-Trip and get stable base information via the fixed locations that are available all around the US and UK and various places. As I've said, DJI do have an RTK mobile base station, which will be available as well. Now, this does use OcuSync, and it, it's the basically the same principle as you had on the M210 RTK. It is not the same base station itself. It is different 
because this one uses OcuSync, but it is basically a mobile RTK base station to be used with the Phantom 4 RTK aircraft. So you have multiple options. You can use that base station or you can actually use NTRIP and get RTK data over the internet. Overall, this is a very interesting aircraft, and as I've said, it isn't available through the usual sale channels, and you're going to need to speak to your enterprise dealer. Um, talking about pricing, well, as far as I understand it, for the base aircraft itself, with out the RTK mobile base station you're looking about three and a half thousand dollars with the RTK mobile base station it's around seven thousand dollars as far as I know again these are just rough estimates it is going to be available now in a number of countries and it is also compatible with the DJI ground station pro PC app as well so for guys who have been used to doing mapping on the Phantom 4 via USB they can still do that with this aircraft it's one that DJI haven't really made a huge amount of noise about, but it isn't something you'd expect them to do either. The images and everything from this is still compatible with all of the usual suspects out there, like Pix4D, Drone Deploy, and all of them, so you can update your data without problem. There is a lot more that could be talked about on this aircraft, but the basics are that it is a Phantom 4 Pro Vision 2.0 with RTK fitted with an entirely new remote controller with a lot of new features and a external extra RTK mobile base station. Overall, that is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. As I've mentioned, if you like what you see, please do subscribe. There are some links in the description to the release notes that I've showed in this video as well, and I will do another video again soon.